Good morning, eighth grade. I hope that you are able to get some rest um, over the weekend, that after Friday's trial, you're able to feel a little bit more confident today and just know that we're still going to work with you guys on this adjustment. So a um, couple of deadlines that I want to remind you of first. So with the Count of Monte Cristo, you want to keep up with your reading schedule. I've got that posted in the literature section with the guided notes and the character keeper sheet. And as before, those are due at the end of the unit. So you're gonna be responsible for keeping up with those. And really a lot of what we're doing this last nine weeks, so it was originally scheduled, was to read and talk about the, the story. So um, you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that you keep up with that. And there may be some days where my video is just a little bit of reading. If you want to find an audiobook that's compatible and read along with it, that's well. Read together as a family, that's fine. I know some of you were wanting to know about vocabulary. So we're doing Unit 11. The quiz is going to be Monday, April 13th, since the 10th is Good Friday. So you've got a couple days longer than two weeks to work on that. What I've done is I've posted um, an announcement in the vocabulary section that tells you some different practice and review assignments that you can choose from to do. Um, you're going to need to pick three of those and turn those in just by April 13th. So you've got that time to do that. I would still recommend that you study about five to 10 minutes a day or every other day, just so that you actually know those, those words. Quiz is still open book. Grammar, the last nine weeks is supposed to be mostly review. So about two to three times a week, I'll have a small assignment for you to do to kind of loop back and touch on some of those things that we may need some more practice with. By the end of this week, and I really don't want you to do this one early, you can, but um, I'd like for you to actually do this on Friday. I've got a study skills survey, um, and what that is, is it's just going to ask you to tell me how your week went and how user-friendly things are, things that, you know, your teachers can do to help you guys out after you've had a, a trial run. So um, you'll still want to check the class uh, wall every day first to make sure that you watch the video and also to make sure you answer the attendance question on the class wall and if, if you'll do that as a response as a comment to my post that'll really help us to be able to track everything a um, couple of things that I noticed on Friday so Uploading or submitting, you want to make sure that you either do that by taking a picture and uploading it to that assignment, or you can do it in a Word document, upload it again. If I have a Word document that you fill in, you need to first download that Word document, save it, add your stuff, save it again, and then upload it. And then I know some of you all may not have Word or you're a Mac user, so you may want to try with some PDF copies. So what I've actually done on our um, class information, if I post a, a resource, I have a Word version and a PDF version to help you guys. So those are just a few things I noticed. Um, if you have a question for me, don't post it on the class wall. I won't see it as quickly. You'll want to go up to the chat or email me, and then I'll be able to get that. It'll actually bloop and notify me, and then I'm able to uh, answer your questions a little bit faster. Um, some things that I'm going to want to discuss over the next few weeks, just as we, you know, this is a time of reflection, a time of kind of rethinking why we do what we do. So again, I'm going to discuss leisure, goodness, truth, beauty, and, and worldview over the next few weeks in some of these videos that I present with you guys, just to give us some things to, to think about. Um, I looked at your concerns and your things that you're looking forward to with online learning, and they're very understandable. Um, often they're very similar, actually, sorry, to what some of your teachers are looking forward to and are concerned about. So I'm going to share some of mine. Um, my likes. I enjoy getting to see my family more. It's really a, a plus, a positive. I also enjoy not having to get up um, as early and drive an hour and 10 minutes in the morning. 
um, and then an hour and 10 minutes back after the sun goes down. So I enjoy getting to go outside and actually see the sunshine. So being in the heart of the school and arriving at school really before the sun comes up and leaving sometimes after the sun's starting to go down, um, there was definitely a whole month where I did not see the sun and I missed it so much. So it's, it's nice to be able to go for a walk on, on my lunch break and to be able to just soak up that sunshine. Um, getting to see the inventiveness and humanity of others, my colleagues being creative, whether it's through something like the night show or their videos or just conversations where we're talking with one another. Um, it's a really good thing to get to see that come together. I enjoy getting to be creative and think outside the box a little bit. And this has definitely forced me to have to do that some. Um, my concerns. So the whole video thing, that's not my comfort zone at all. Um, and so that's, that's definitely been an adjustment. You guys are worth it, but you're about one of the only things that would make me do that. Um, so um, you guys mentioned you're afraid of turning something in wrong. I'm afraid that I'm going to post something or that my site doesn't look as user friendly, even as another teacher's, you know, those are thoughts that go through my head. So I'm going to work with you guys. And that's one of the reasons I'm asking for feedback because I understand I've done online stuff and the format can be a little wonky. Um, another thing I miss you guys tremendously. I had a nightmare a couple years ago where a droid took over my classroom and I couldn't interact with my students and it was absolutely awful. So <laughs> I really do miss you guys. Um, with that, I miss the natural flow of conversation, um, just this organic way of speaking and teaching. I read something about two years ago in my master's program by Plato called the superiority of the written to the spoken, or sorry, of the spoken word to the written word. So he was saying the spoken word was superior, written word not. And at first, as a writer, I was kind of offended. I was like, I can't believe he said that. And he's Plato, so people are going to listen to him. And I felt shunned or something anyway but then I read it and I didn't take it personally anymore and I realized what he was saying I realized he was saying that that dialectic which just means back and forth conversation and questioning and answering that has a value that you can't get when something's just copied down um, if you're reading something, you can't always ask the author, hey, why'd you say that? You know, what do you mean by this? When we're in a conversation with one another, we can. And so we're gonna have to be flexible in how we try to bridge that gap. So discussion posts, and I'll talk more about what I want for that this week. We're going to ease into that. and That'll be one way that'll help us out. So um, with all of this, it really goes back to change and unexpected change that's huge. Um, I'm looking at things from a completely different perspective, and I'm sure a lot of you all are too. Um, you know, uh, even just going places, you know, that's something that we take for granted, or um, thinking about you know, our, our, our health. I've never really thought about my health that much. And there may be people, some of you guys who are like, yeah, I've had to think about that whole lot because you have a family member or you've gone through things yourself. Um, but there's a lot that I've taken for granted. Um, but I will say there are some things that I found are actually kind of the same. And so um, just an example would be, you know, Angus turned seven years old the other day. And the way that we celebrate birthdays at the character carrier house is that we usually pick a theme and we dress up as these different characters and we have this themed party and we focus on good food and, and things like that. And we were still able to do that. Angus chose Star Wars because also at the carrier house, when you turn seven, you get to watch the original Star Wars movie because my mom was seven when the movie came out. So that's just kind of a weird coming of age tradition thing that we have. And we still got to do that. And we still had a wonderful time. And so I tried to translate that into just a question that's really on everybody's mind of, you know, does online learning give us a less quality of an education? How much does it change it? And so it was like, yeah, there's definitely some changes and it could, you know, um, reduce the quality in some ways, but there's some other ways that it's not because there's some things that still are not changing. So reading is still reading. Writing is still writing. 
math is still math. Um, what's different is that methodology, but that content, especially, you know, if we look back to things that are, that are very old and that have stood the test of time, um, those things are still the same. Um, and yes, that methodology, again, is different. We're going to have to make that adjustment, that curve. Um, that personal connection is not quite there. Even with real homeschooling, your parent is your teacher. And so this is even different from that. Um, but I want us to think about this maybe as being like another first day. Um, as an interruption, you know, we do still have first days of school where we have to slowly set things up so that the rest of the year will, will flow. Or an interruption, you have to, to adjust, and that's something that, you know, the Lord knows, and he's not surprised by any interruptions that we've had. And so um, I have to ask myself, okay, well, what is he concerned about um, right now? And when I do that, that really simplifies things. And I think right now we're living in a time where we're having to simplify a lot. And simplicity doesn't always mean that something is less quality. Sometimes it can be a deeper appreciation for something that's actually key and core and yet often overlooked. So I want us to think of it that way. Um, and, you know, along with that, classical Christian education shapes us into certain types of people. So a classical Christian approach would ask in all of this, how is what I'm doing, not just the things I'm turning in for class, but all day long, how is what I'm doing shaping the type of person that I'm going to be? And more specifically with definitely the Christian component of how is this shaping me to be more like Christ? Okay. So with that, I want to read something to you guys from one of my favorite authors, Mr. C.S. Lewis. He's actually stealing something from a guy named George MacDonald. Uh, that was his, his theological hero. And he's talking in mere Christianity towards the end. He's talking about, is Christianity hard or is it easy? You know, does Christianity just make us nice people? or does it transform us into completely different people? And so as we're dealing with, you know, all of these changes, not just with school, but with everything else in our lives, um, I, I wanna share this. Um, it's a good reminder for me as well. He says, imagine yourself as a living house. God comes in to rebuild that house. At first, perhaps you can understand what he is doing. He is getting the drains right and stopping the leaks in the roof and so on. You knew that those jobs needed doing and so you're not surprised. But presently he starts knocking the house about in a way that hurts abominably and does not seem to make sense. What on earth is he up to? The explanation is that he is building quite a different house from the one you thought of. Throwing out a new wing here, putting on an extra floor there, running up towers, making courtyards. You thought you were going to be made into a decent little cottage, but he is building a palace. He intends to come and live in it himself. Have a wonderful day.